this one seems to be alive. What a lucky guy. At least death would have saved him from the dreams. You're a bolt that fell out of the machine. Unfortunately, that did not come to our attention for a long time. From the moment the zone was formed, many people have tried to get to its center, but we cannot let that happen. Humanity is not ready for the truth. That is why we recruited stalkers by promising them the fulfillment of their most coveted desires. It came from the death truck. It's got the mark. Well, you know the drill. Leave him on this the... This is a live one. Bullshit! You're lying! Let the zone take me if I am. When you think of Stalker, you probably think of Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl, Stalker 2 that's coming out soon, or maybe even Stalker Gamma slash Anomaly, the mod. But one game I almost never hear people talk about is Stalker Call of Pripyat. It falls under one subgenre that I absolutely love, that is Slavic post-apocalyptic survival RPGs. And it's honestly pretty funny how many there are. I've poured close to a thousand hours in Escape from Tarkov, finished all the Metro games, played a lot of DayZ, played all the Stalker games and even Arma to some extent, and since FPS RPGs are my absolute favorite genre, I've been holding off on playing Call of Pripyat since I knew it was going to be a banger. I was under the assumption that this is a direct sequel to Shadow of Chernobyl, I'll just call that SOC, and let's also call Call of Pripyat COP from now on. However, this is really more like a Half-Life Opposing Forces situation where instead of playing the good guy in the main game, you now play as the bad guy in the DLC. In fact, I'm almost certain that's where they drew their inspiration. You play as a USS Major that goes undercover as a stalker to find out a mystery as to why all of the USS's helos crashed during an operation dubbed Operation Fairway. Now, much context is given after beating SOC, and I would love to explain the lore to you, but you really should just play Shadow of Chernobyl. It is among one of the greats. Its atmosphere and horror are unmatched in my opinion, which is really what I love the most about the beginning of Call of Pripyat. COP absolutely puts its best foot forward with the first area, it's this marshy, dried up sea with abandoned ships being the home for many stalkers and bandits. It's dingy, it's musty, it's gross. I love it. All the characters you meet in this area are really interesting and for the first time ever in probably a video game, I actually found myself enthralled in reading non-voice acted dialogue. <laughs> this area is everything I want out of a stalker game. The side quests have really interesting premises, and I couldn't help but think some of these guys actually wanted to screw me over and set me up a few times. And to my surprise, some people really are there to scam you and leave you for dead. Plus 100. Oh, whoa. Brother, listen! There's this artifact. It's got healing powers. I need a real bed. A buddy of mine is about to buy the farm from this weird sickness. Our medicine can't do crap. I tried to grab that artifact, but stumbled into a gas anomaly. Um... No. Just you keep walking. You'll remember this moment, that's for sure. Stop right there! Oh, you were 100% trying to just... You were... Trying to rob me from the start. The world just feels brutal, unforgiving, and depressing. Speaking of brutal and depressing, I of course decided to play this game on its hardest difficulty, Master, which I feel like is the true way to experience this game. Resources felt limited, I had to clear rooms like a navy seal, I had to make sure I kept up on the maintenance of my weapons, and soon enough I was actually making real survival decisions. I would see a group of enemies and each time I would have to determine if it was worth it to shoot these people and use money on ammo, repairs, and medkits, or just sneak past them. 
Now one thing that made this game much easier is of course the quick save and quick load feature, which I might just make an entire separate video on the idea of quick saving and quick loading, but that's for another time. Quick save and quick load allowed me to breeze through the game, but I think using the feature was warranted. Whenever I wasn't constantly quick saving and I decided to leave it up to the game, dying would sometimes set me back a whole 30 minutes of gameplay. I, I am not... Oh, oh, I just got insta-killed. Give it to him good. No, dude. What's going on? All the way... All the way back here. Oh my god, I hate that feeling. That was like 30 minutes. Which is ridiculous. But <laughs> When a game makes me do the exact same thing as last time without changing up much at all, I'm going to use that quick save feature. That didn't mean the game wasn't tough though. There was still the constant game of resource management that I had to keep track of, resources that I could be using for the weapon modding system. Sick segue, right? There's actually a few mechanics that Shadow of Chernobyl didn't really have. Each technician NPC has the option to upgrade weapons, and when you bring them better tools, you can craft more mods. I decided pretty early on that I was going to fully mod out this M4 since it's super accurate and it just looks dope. They also added mods for the armor, and repairing all of these items was pretty frequent. I spent many rubles just on upkeep that might have been because I played on Master, not really sure though. Plus, now the world is mostly open with much less zone-based areas like SOC, but I suppose that is the elephant in the room. I mentioned earlier that this game feels like a DLC, and that is for a reason. See, we could have a decent sized Venn diagram that shows all the positives and negatives of both games, but there were some pretty glaring ones that I couldn't help but notice. A huge plus that I'll give COP is that there's only three areas that are all fairly large. Compared to SOC where there's a ton of small areas and many loading screens, SOC felt very linear, which is fine, but multiple replays made it pretty unenticing. The horror aspect, however, is a completely crucial part of Stalker. Playing SOC for the first time was genuinely terrifying at many parts, especially when they introduced the monsters. This had much to do with the setting, the lighting, the atmosphere, and scripted interactions with these monsters. But there really wasn't too much horror going on at all in COP, but I suppose that's because the monsters are supposed to be now more understood and might be common knowledge. They probably just wanted you to play SOC first though. Finding artifacts was pretty confusing in this game. In SOC, they were very abundant, which I don't think is necessarily realistic, as realistic as nuclear artifacts that directly improve your physical attributes are. But in COP, I didn't realize until I was finished with the game that you have to use this meter thingy to find the artifacts which probably is better than SOC, but I didn't read anything that told me about them since I thought I knew everything about artifacts already. We'll just chalk this one up to user error, I suppose. Next on the hit list is the dialogue. Some of you might notice that the intro of this video, I only used SOC dialogue scenes from the intro and the interaction at the end of the game. That's because the English dub for COP is completely unusable and honestly just very hilarious. No. What the hell is that? Wait! We're all dead. Help! Someone help me! Get that thing away from me! No! Recon unit, come in. What is going on out there? We need to find the recon unit. Major, find out what happened. But that's part of the charm of these games. I enjoy it more than perfectly performed dialogue sometimes. My next gripe in this gauntlet of complaints is that gearing up was not really necessary, like, at all. Like I mentioned, I didn't use any artifacts simply because I couldn't find any. I also never fully upgraded my M4 or my armor, and only used this Gauss rifle in the last fight. The game 
just isn't that hard to be honest. And sure, quick saving plays a part, but enemy variants weren't too hard besides some monsters here and there. I was under the impression that there was going to be more in this game. I kept thinking, well, I'll just come back later and upgrade when I get more money, which never happened. I ran out of side quests to do, I didn't know how to get the artifacts, so I wasn't hunting them, which probably would have been a pretty fun way to make money. And the final area literally doesn't have any money making quests, vendors to buy and sell from, or technicians that can upgrade items. I thought I had way more time to get things sorted, and I thought I'd come back to the other areas for a few more quests, but then... Let me lay some foundation. This is heavy spoilers for Shadow of Chernobyl, basically for the rest of the video, so tune out if you plan on playing it. In SoC, you play as a stalker named Strelok. Now, if you've played the intro of SoC, you know that that in itself is an insane plot twist because your goal the entire game is to find a man named Strelok and kill him. Anyways, a lot of stuff happens and eventually you disable this thing called the Brain Scorcher. With this disabled, everybody in the zone was now free to enter the center of the zone, Pripyat and the Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant, or CNPP for short. This event in the game was insane. It was like World War IV, all the stalkers, factions, USS forces, a giant religious cult that wants to protect the center, and bandits all around the zone rushed to the center. Stalkers and bandits wanted treasures, factions wanted territory, monolith cultists wanted to kill everybody, and military forces wanted to control it all. It was absolute chaos, crawling through the streets of Pripyat, getting gunned down by snipers and mauled by mutants. Reaching the CNPP boasted an even harder challenge with the USS Helos gunning everyone down and the culmination of all factions fighting in one giant war. Whilst you slip inside alone, your one goal is to find the truth behind the zone and who you truly are. The culmination of hours of work, doing odd jobs, gearing up, making friends, joining a faction, and searching secret laboratories has finally come to this objectively epic final point. You're greeted by an AI in the center of it all, and he happily tube feeds you some pretty insane lore and exposition. Now, there's many endings, but the true ending relies on your decision to join this AI or to decline him and leave. If you leave, you have to fight your way out of the CNPP by taking numerous portals and killing so many heavily armed forces as punishment for declining the AI's offer. And at the end, you finally obtain peace. The story leaves on such a beautiful note as you're unsure if you made the right decision for humanity, but at least you've survived your own journey. Now cut back to COP. Your goal is to find out what happened after the attack of the CNPP, aka Operation Fairway. Why did all of the helicopters fall suspiciously out of the sky? You spend all this time trying to figure it out. You find out the evacuation zone that all the USS pilots were ordered to go to that was in Pripyat. You go there, meet your comrades, establish comms with HQ again, and attempt to finish out Operation Fairway. The new directive is to get out of Pripyat and return home. With no more leads, dwindling men with each mission, and morale completely diminished, things started to look grim. Until... Strelok knocks on the front door, tells you why the helicopters fell, and you all escape happily ever after. I'm not even kidding, that is the plot twist. And the answer to why all the helos crashed is so simple, it's dumbfounding. Basically, the maps these pilots had were wrong because anomalies in the air were changing whenever an emission happened. And Strelok waltzes in and just mentions it like it's common knowledge, like it's no big deal. So yeah, you basically escort Strelok and your crew to some military choppers and have a little last battle with monolith cultists. But here's the interesting part. Strelok can actually die. And the mission doesn't end. 
you can actually have a completely different ending where Strelok dies. In fact, the coolest part of Sea of Peace's story is that any NPC can die, changing the final scene where they kind of recap everything in an 80 movies fashion. This is actually something I found super cool. In the journey to Pripyat, you have to put together this ragtag group of people in order to fight your way through an underground tunnel system that leads to Pripyat, which is my favorite part of the story. You convince a drunkard duty member, Zulu, to help you with this operation, and it's up to you to bring whoever you want with you underground, basically. I picked up a USS soldier, an ex-monolith cultist whose memory got wiped, and a guy that owes me like 30 bucks that Zulu constantly makes fun of. And while navigating these tunnels, any one of the NPCs that you've bonded with can actually die permanently. I just thought this was a really neat idea, and sometimes I wish I didn't save scum and get the completely happy, true, happy ending. Everybody, you know jumps up and high fives but whatever this game was really fun nonetheless just had a completely underwhelming story and it really did feel like dlc but that's all i got thanks for listening buy stalker 2 when it comes out and subscribe or you will have stinky feet